If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I'm a big proponent of shooting in RAW. But there are times when that's just not available to you. It might be that the cell phone in your pocket is the only camera you have to hand, and it only shoots JPEG. So, you do what you have to do. But when it comes to processing JPEGs, we have a lot less latitude than we have with a RAW file. In this video, I am going to introduce what I call a newbie's guide to processing JPEGs in Darktable. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 138 of Understanding Darktable. Something a little bit different this episode. I am assuming that you are new to Darktable and you're just finding your feet. As I said in the intro, I am a big fan of shooting in RAW, but let's say you have been shooting in JPEG all of your life, or maybe you just prefer to shoot JPEG for some reason. The ability to process a JPEG is limited because of the amount of data that is captured. Right, The whole idea of a JPEG is to take this massive quantity of data that the sensor in your camera or your phone is capable of collecting and then shrinking it down to only the bare minimum of data required to represent the scene that you took a photo of. Now, to demonstrate this, I've just been out to my shed <laughs> and taken a couple of JPEGs, one using Sony's auto white balance, and one where I deliberately set an incorrect white balance. So if we look at the auto white balance version, this is it. And I can tell just by looking at this on my calibrated monitor that those colors are very accurate, very close to what I would see with the naked eye if I went back out to my shed. This door is a sort of a grayish color, got all these red tones in the wood, the dark red of my toolbox. The insulation up here at the top is reflecting silver, and it is silver insulation. If we now look at the second image I shot with an incandescent white balance, when clearly I was not in a location with incandescent lighting, we can see that the white balance is way out of whack. Now, just to demonstrate this, let's change our histogram from the regular histogram view to an RGB parade. Now, on our auto white balanced version of the image, we can see this sort of arc across the mid-range of all three color channels, red, green, and blue. And that arc is sitting at pretty much the same height on all three color channels. And that tells me that the white balance is balanced, that white will render as white. Now, if we come over to the image with the incorrect white balance, we can see that that arc across the middle of those three color channels is nowhere near at the same height on all three channels. Can we correct it? Mm, kind of. We could come over to our white balance module here and try and get the temperature to be... Okay, so there we've got red and blue pretty much equal, but the green is too high. So we'll try, and you can see how sensitive this is. And that's the problem with working with a JPEG. Things get out of control very quickly. So our blue is still a little low, somewhere about there. That is probably as close as I'm gonna get. And as we can see, things are still not right. The insulation is not reflecting silver, it's looking yellow. The pegboard and the door are looking blue when they're meant to be gray. So these are the sorts of limitations you're up against when you shoot with JPEG. Your, abil your ability to change the white balance is as limited as my ability to speak. Uh, <laughs> the amount of data that is stored in the JPEG is just not enough for us to accurately correct 
for having shot with an incorrect white balance. Now, the great thing about most cell phones is that they generally shoot auto white balance. And for the most part, they do a pretty good job of, you know, getting it right. But throw them into a scene with some challenging lighting or mixed lighting sources, like maybe you've got a setting sun and some neon lights of a building or, or who knows what it might be. There are multiple instances where you can have different light sources that are different color temperatures. And that's where things can really just not go right for you. And if you don't get that white balance correct at the time of exposure and you are shooting in JPEG, you are going to be severely limited in what you can do in post. For those of you who are new to Darktable, be aware that this icon here, which looks like a power button, represents what we call in Darktable land, the pixel pipe. And the pixel pipe is the modules that are processing your image in order from bottom to top. So in this instance, the very first thing happening to our JPEG is the white balance. After that, an input color profile is being assigned. The input color profile is Adobe RGB and our working profile is Linear Rec 2020. Now, Linear Rec 2020 is a massive big color space. Our JPEG color space is probably like this in comparison. I would suggest don't ever change the working color profile. It is set to this massive color profile so that anything you wanna do, as crazy and as wacky as you wanna get with your processing, you can do it within the confines of this big color space. And then at the point of rendering your image out, depending on what color profile it needs to be in at the time of render, and for digital displays, that's generally sRGB, you can then remap whatever craziness you've done in this big color space down to whatever color space it is that you're rendering to. So an input color profile, a working color profile, and gamut clipping is turned off. Now, the reason it's turned off is because we've taken this small color space of the JPEG and we've put it into this big field of the working color space. So we don't want to apply gamut clipping as on top of it because we've got this much bigger space we can work in. So we can let the gamut be a little crazy and spread its wings because we've cranked up saturation or whatever it is that we've done. So we don't need to have gamut clipping on whilst we are doing our processing. We can apply that at the end when we need to rein all those colors back into whatever color space we are going to export in, if that makes sense. All right. After the input color profile, we have orientation. That's simply, do I want this landscape? Do I want a portrait? Do I want to rotate it, flip it, whatever. In this case, we're happy with the orientation. And then we've got our output color profile. And by default, this will be sRGB because that's the profile you're going to use for most digital displays. If you wanted to put this on your phone, put it on a laptop or a tablet or use it as wallpaper on your desktop, whatever, sRGB would be what you were going to use. If you wanted to print this image to an inkjet printer, you would probably still leave it in sRGB or maybe Adobe RGB. If you wanted to send it off for a four color print process, you would ideally want CMYK, but sadly, we don't yet have that option in Darktable. And there are a bunch of other formats here that for various reasons, you might have a reason to choose as an export format. But most of the time, you will leave that on sRGB. Now, remember I spoke about the pixel pipe? The pixel pipe is fixed. So the order in which you do things in Darktable does not influence the order in which Darktable applies certain modules. For example, I could come into this group here and maybe apply a vignette, right? And I'll just do this just to show off exactly what I'm trying to demonstrate here. So I've applied that vignette 
And if we look at our pixel pipe, we can see that vignette is the second last thing that happens before our image is passed onto the output color profile. But if I now come to say the color balance RGB and I introduce a bit of contrast and maybe I introduce a bit of saturation and we've now come back to the pixel pipe, you can see that the color balance RGB module is being applied before the vignette is being applied, even though I applied those modules in the opposite order. I did the vignette and then I did color balance RGB. Understand that that is done for a very specific reason. It is because the developers of Darktable know exactly what each module does and they understand the best time for each module to be applied in the flow of input to output. It is fixed for a reason. There are ways around it, but you're not there yet. But just understand that that is the way Darktable works. You can apply whatever processing you want to apply to an image in whatever order you like. That will not necessarily be the order in which Darktable applies each module. In terms of actually processing this image, I don't want the color balance RGB crazy settings that I just put on there, and I don't want the vignetting either. So from my history module, I can just jump back to white balance, and now those last two steps that I did have been undone. I could compress the history stack, which will throw away steps seven and eight, or I could simply just go and grab another module and start tweaking and those two will disappear and whatever module I've decided to start tweaking in will now appear as the top history state. So let's go over here to our, well, let's go to our crop module, for example. And let's say I wanted to apply a 16 by nine crop to this image, like so. I don't want the toolbox at the bottom for whatever reason. So now you can see on the history state, crop has replaced vignette and color balance RGB is gone completely. And I close the crop module to commit that crop and so on and so forth. As you apply more processing, those things will be added to the pixel pipe here and you will see each step along the way in your history module. In terms of what modules you have to work with, from this hamburger menu, you will see that there are a few different choices. Modules all will show you every module that exists within Darktable, and there are lots of them. I would recommend Workflow Beginner if you are new to Darktable, and that will minimize the number of modules that you see. It will give you a basic base group which has these modules, a basic color group, and a basic effects group. If you've seen something earlier in this video and it doesn't show up in this workflow beginner group, try the scene referred group, which is generally where I have my system set. Display referred and scene referred is a topic of a whole different video, uh, which if I remember, I will put a link to up there. And I'm gonna leave it right there because I'll assume that you understand what basic color processing modules do because I'm assuming you've come from some other platform or some other piece of software that allowed you to edit your images. So you already understand curves and levels and saturation and so on and so forth. But I hope this has just given you a basic understanding of Darktable and how you can work with a JPEG image. The next video I do is going to be something very similar, but it will be a newbie's guide to working with raw files in Darktable. Sing out down below if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, and I will catch you in the next one.